You're watching The Mailbox. I'm Yusuf Estes, and we're taking questions from our website called IslamMailbox.com. Yeah, okay. And uh, we just had one now come in. Let me read it to you. Okay, it's from a Muslim. Okay, he's just telling us what country he's in. All right, he says, I know we can't own a dog, or can we? Uh, what's the hookum about this? Okay. <laughs> Actually, this is a, a mistake because a lot of people think that um, uh, from some hadith that we have that it's haram to own a dog. The hadith actually need to be explained to you by a scholar so you don't get confused. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, left a legacy. This hadith or sayings or teachings that he left for us help us to understand what it says in the Quran and how to utilize it. For instance, let's talk about the dog. This is a good subject. Go to chapter uh, 18 called Surah Kaf. And when you read it, you'll see that the, in the beginning part of it, it's talking about the question of some people sleeping in a cave. They're called the sleepers in the cave. And it mentions that they have a dog in the cave with them. The dog is with them. And as they're sleeping, the dog is sleeping. And they're turning on their sides and so on and it talks about in details it never says anything about them kicking the dog out or that they can't have a dog so it's clearly uh, something mentioned here additionally in the Quran it tells us about when we go hunting for food you know maybe you shoot an animal to eat then you send the dog out to get it now you're not allowed to eat if the dog has been eating it himself but if he just brings it back to you, then you can eat it. So twice now in the Quran, you're seeing something here about dogs. Also, we know that a person can have a dog for taking care of their sheep or their goats or their herded animals. A dog can also be kept, obviously, to protect you in the night when burglars or robbers come by or anybody want to bother you. You've got a guard dog there. Someone could be blind and need a seeing eye dog. All of these things are acceptable totally and completely in Islam. So if you said, oh, but I think you can't own one, then what we need is a proof from whatever you know of Islam to show us why you think you can't own a dog. And they say, well, I heard there was a hadith or teaching from Muhammad that says that angels don't even go in a room with dogs and pictures. Okay, but it didn't say you couldn't have a dog. Actually, what it's saying is the angels of mercy because it was talking about, especially when you're going to do your prayers, your salah, so just don't have a dog in there at that time. It's not that big of a deal. But do get the details from our website because we go into a, a lot of details. For instance, how about a cat or a bird or a fish? Can we own these other types of animals? And again, yes, it's not a problem. As long as you provide for them, you care for them, and don't pin them up so that they can't live a natural life. If you're restricting their life and making it difficult for them, they can't enjoy it, and uh, they might die as a result of what you're doing to them, then of course that's not permissible in Islam. We always say this, Islam is about rights and limits. And for sure you want to give the animals their rights just like anybody else. So do visit our website to get the details behind the subjects that we've been talking about, even to watch this program again. That's going to be at islammailbox.com. And until the next time, we'll be looking for you there. you look for us there. Well, peace. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.